Councillor Cordova. Thank you, Mayor. Briefly, I certainly have a lot of sympathy for the representatives who, who raised their concerns um, around the Osborne Esplanade, also around um, all the other the sites there. Uh, I just do note also that it says that, um, please note that in terms of parking, please note that these sites are not reserved for food trucks. They're public spaces and may only be used by food trucks if appropriate parking spaces within the mapped areas are available. I note that site two, Osborne Esplanade, is as uh, the deputy mayor alluded to, it, it's only one. It's one food truck trading one day per week. Is my understanding from nine till six? Um, am I correct? Yep. And then, and similarly with site six, it's um, trading up to three days per week. There is a balance here that needs to be struck, and obviously, I would want a situation where those generators don't produce the amount of noise that they clearly do. And if it's disruptive, I think that's a shame and I have enormous sympathy for the people who are affected by that. Um, the, the countervailing force there is that it adds, as Councillor Gladewright alluded to, a certain vibrancy and choice for the consumer and uh, a greater variety of offerings that this municipality provides. And so, of course, I'm torn in, in that respect. I think that this is an area that could potentially be mediated by having um, a really good look at what happens after this um, after this passes, so I won't be supporting Councillor Street's amendment on this occasion. I think this is part of the, these policies are reviewed on a regular basis, and, and we can adapt, adopt, and improve where we need to. So, um, on this occasion, I think that that for me, having more choice is better. Um, and so, whilst I have sympathy for those representatives who are who are not going to like this decision, I am going to vote against Councillor Street's amendment. Thanks. Amendment. Councillor Cordova. Thank you, Mayor. This is a tricky one. And am I right in thinking that at Sandfly intersection, for example, even though that's obviously state growth, it's a state growth highway, state growth everything, but I think it's like 11 spaces there. And so a food van, whilst I can see why it would be great to grab a coffee, but I can also see how that would really stuff up the day for like a whole lot of people, not a whole lot of people, three or four people who would miss out in, in a place where there's only 11 spots. Um, firstly, am I correct about that? Mr. Reeve. Yeah, that, that's correct. And, and you're right in terms of the fact it probably has a greater effect on some of the smaller um, park and rides. Mm -hmm. uh, for some of the larger ones there, it may or may not be possible to actually put in place there. I guess well, all I'm saying is, is a couple of the larger ones that I've actually mentioned there um, are not actually in council control, they're actually in someone else's control and would need, um, I guess, some sort of approval for them to actually go and put that in there. Okay, uh, Councillor Cordova, is there another question? I'll just uh, finish my contribution sure. by saying that I am completely undecided at this point, so I'm going to be listening to Councillor, because I can really see how it could potentially be tricky. In Sandfly, particularly, there's there's a petrol station right across the road where you can get a coffee. You, you We'd want them to get a coffee there rather than wasting a whole day's worth of parking for three or four people who should be on the bus. Um, so in those smaller ones... And I understand <laughs> Councillor Street. Um, so I'm really, I need some, I welcome the debate because this is a tricky one. Does anyone have, uh, Councillor Street, on the amendment? On the amendment, just a question. Um, regardless of whether we get rid of 6.1c, um, this would still have to be an alternative trading location that would be assessed by staff against all those criteria in, in three anyway, wouldn't it? So... You, you're still going to be looking at whether it's a good idea or not, regardless of whether 6.1c is in there or not. <laughs> Mr Reeve. I'm um, putting the responsibility on you now. <laughs> I, I might just add a bit extra to my response there. Um, only just maybe there'd be some other questions that might be of a similar ilk there. Um, one of the difficulties of putting a policy together is just how specific you get with the policy there. So this one here is probably more specific than I would normally like to see in a policy, um, and that's why you probably get a lot of this debate that's actually happening as well at the same time. It, it is nice to get the intention of council and the intention of council as to what they want to actually provide for the community there. And I guess when we sometimes get into these ones here, it does get quite tricky. Um, but unfortunately with this one there, I, I think we've, we've had to put that detail in there because of the, the I guess, the level of interest in, in some of that detail there. So we have done that. Um, so in terms of what you're actually saying there, yes, they're alternative locations 
will come back to the council officers. They will assess it against everything that's actually in the policy. They will also be looking at making a common sense sort of approach to it all as well at the same time. 